Welcome to MH2801's video segment on why learn complex analysis. Now, every year when I teach this part of the course, students ask why we are learning all the integral theorems um, about why we learned residues, why we learned Laurent Lora series expansions, and why um, and how is how are all these useful uh, in studying physics, for example. And it's not so easy for me then to explain to them because uh, the most important lecture on complex analysis is actually the last one, where we show how all these, all the things, or the theorems that we have learned, how the, all the machineries that we have learned can be put into practice. And what is it that we want to use complex analysis for, actually? It is to evaluate real integrals. Okay, of course you can ask me why we want to evaluate real integrals and I can tell you that we will need to evaluate real integrals a lot when we go on to for the Fourier analysis part of the course uh, but for now, let us accept that you know, evaluating real integrals is a good um, thing to do in its own right and, uh, and just try to understand where complex analysis fit in to all of these. Now, the two kinds of integrals that we will be evaluating quite a lot in this course, okay, the first type is an integral from, say, negative infinity to infinity of, say, fx dx and the other type is an integral say from 0 to t of f of t dt okay so in this cut this particular integral we will definitely be associated with Fourier transforms whereas this type of integrals will be associated with Fourier series because in order to evaluate the Fourier co coefficients we frequently have to integrate over one period of a periodic function and of course uh, for Fourier transform we integrate uh, all the way uh, all along the real axis. Now these are real integrals and how is learning complex analysis useful in, help, in helping us eva uh, evaluate them. And it turns out that for both cases for both cases, we transform them we transform them both into complex integrals, complex contour integrals. Okay? And of course there will be uh, when we transform them into complex contour integrals, frequently the integrands themselves. So this leads to okay, uh, finding out that, that f of z uh, is singular at maybe say z equals to z1, z2, and so on and so forth. So it may it may be singular. The integrand function may be singular at uh, different points on the complex plane. So we can only deal with uh, functions which are singular at isolated points, uh, not functions that are uh, singular along a whole curve or functions that are singular along a whole area. Well, I mean, I think we we can we can deal with some of those but not in general. So in general, we'll learn how to deal with isolated points of singularity on the complex plane. And even for uh, even in this particular case, we have to split into two different uh, sub-cases to consider, one of which where the singularities, where the singularities uh, lie uh, outside of the contour of integration and another another subclass of integrals uh, where the singularities of the integrand function some of which not all of them lie 
along the contour of integration and for the for the first type for this type of integrals we would be applying the residue theorem okay whereas for this type of uh, integrals we will be considering its Cauchy principal value so you notice something very strange here when we are talking first about our our goal we're going backwards to figure out what we need to learn in complex analysis so for first the first one of the first things that we need to learn would be to first figure out where f of z is singular and this requires us to consider the Laurent series expansion of f of z and then when we finally can decide whether we are dealing with singularities that lie outside of the uh, contour or lie not along the contour of integration we will choose to apply the residue theorem or if the singularities lie along the contour of integration we will choose to consider its Cauchy principal value but for both for both residue the application of residue theorem and Cauchy's principal value we will always need to uh, make use of the more fundamental uh, integral theorems uh, for example in both of these in both of these we will need to learn more about we will need to learn more about Cauchy's integral formula the Cauchy integral formula which gives us a basic understanding on how to obtain the residues that is necessary to evaluate integrals using the residue theorem and even for the Cauchy principal value we will also need to appreciate the Cauchy integral formula and of course both of these depend on uh, the Cauchy integral formula depends on a, an appreciation of how the Cauchy integral formula can apply depends on first our understanding of the Cauchy integral theorem so same thing here the Cauchy integral theorem okay now I will not have um, I will not have um, video segments on the Cauchy integral theorem uh, nor the Cauchy uh, integral formula um, I will leave it to I will have video segments instead on examples uh, applying the Cauchy integral formula as well as the residue theorem as well and also the uh, Cauchy principal value so you can see that you know, in order to evaluate real integrals we need to go all the way back to learn about Cauchy's integral theorem okay, which is a very simple the uh, th theorem which are very, but very powerful we need to learn how to how it applies uh, in, the, the, in deriving the Cauchy integral formula and how that you know, plays a part in our understanding of the residue theorem and how then we can use the uh, residue theorem and um, the Cauchy principal value concept to evaluate um, complex uh, contour integrals which are themselves actually just um, upgraded versions of real integrals so please watch out for the next video segment on examples of the ap application of Cauchy's integral formula and the residue theorem